friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. You know, we get into some easy projects and we get into some really difficult projects and everything in between. This thing falls somewhere in there. <laughs> when you just first look at it, you think, wow, it doesn't need anything, just tighten up the strings, you know? <laughs> That's what you think when you first look at it, that's for sure. Yeah, it looks pretty darn good. Uh, looks pretty well taken care of. You can see this kind of, you can see the almost like greasy feeling or something on the back there, how you can wipe that around. Um, I don't know what that is for sure. Uh, we'll take a look at that, clean all that up too. The rest of it's pretty darn nice until you start looking at it. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of sad because this thing needs a ton of work. It really does. The strings are loose on it, so I can't even play it for you. The belly is really bulged up. It's not too bad at the moment because, uh, you know, we got all the tension off of it. But let's just kind of give you an idea about how bad it is. Even without any tension on it, it's going to have quite a bit of rock, I know. A good eighth inch. Maybe you can see the rock there. It's a good eighth inch. Maybe you'll see it better this way. Yeah, and I would even maybe go a little more than an eighth. Yeah, it's quite a bit. So there's a big belly bulge. This seam is loose. Uh, someone's made a mark here, maybe where the bridge removal was. 99% sure this is a replaced bridge. I don't believe this is the original at all. You can see on the inside all the extra bracing they put on both sides of the center brace. Or, and when I say brace, I don't mean brace. I just mean whatever that, whatever you call that stuff in there. <laughs> My brain's not working. I have a major headache at the moment. There's humidity outside, it's raining, and my sinuses are going crazy. My head is splitting open, so I can't think. But all that extra stuff in there doesn't need to be there, obviously. These tuning keys are um, obviously not uh, the right keys that belong on this guitar. These are, you know, basically Gibson Deluxe type keys uh, that are on a Martin guitar. So somebody has replaced those for sure. Yeah, there's just been a lot of stuff happening here. I, you know, I can tell the, the peg head has been refinished. You can probably see, if I get it in the right light, how the Martin decal is kind of sticking out larger than the rest of the finish. So the, they left the decal and all of that, but they refinished the rest of it. And you can see that very clearly here in the shop. I don't know if it's coming across on video. I'm trying to make the light go across that area so you can kind of see the wrinkle in it. But anyway, for sure that the peg head's been refinished. My assumption is that some of the rest of the guitar may have been refinished, although that's hard to say. I, if they did refinish it, they did a pretty darn good job on the finishing. But there's a lot of little fine line cracks, um, but the piece de resistance, you know, you know how I've told you it, to resist the urge. And I mean absolutely resist the urge to just glue random boards inside your guitar. Well, I, you know, I'm not really talking about these extra boards that are glued on each side of there. That's bad enough. Those are kind of random large boards glued in there. There's some more random boards. Now, I'm gonna see if I can get it on a mirror here or show them to you. Okay, I've got the mirror on this pointed at the random pieces of wood in there. I seriously doubt this thing's gonna show this. Can you possibly see two little tiny white lines going this direction in the mirror? I don't know, if you can see that, you can take your guess as to what you think those are. They are toothpicks. <laughs> so with toothpicks glued up inside it, I rest my case. I say again, anytime you have the urge to just glue some random piece of wood up inside your instrument, I don't care if it's as small as a toothpick or as large as a piece of baby bed rail or paneling that I've found in instruments, just resist the urge with all your being. Just fight it. If you have to go seek help, go seek help, whatever it takes, but resist the urge. <laughs> you know, 
somebody had a good idea. They knew something there, you know, there's a crack and they're trying to fix the crack and put something across it like a cleat. <laughs> but a toothpick is not a cleat. <laughs> Stop and think about it. Even if it sort of kind of worked, how much could it even hold? <laughs> it just, it's a toothpick after all. <laughs> Caleb and I decided that um, Walmart must have had a sale on toothpicks because not only did they use a few inside the guitar, <laughs> but when I took the pegs out, there was a toothpick jammed in one of the peg holes too. <laughs> to help tighten up the strings, I guess, to the peg or whatever. I don't know. I got a bad headache. I'm just gonna have to set this down for a little while. It's hurting me too much to go on. <laughs> we'll see what the next step is. Well, my friends, it's the next morning. While I still have a headache, it's not quite as bad as yesterday, so I guess I'll just tear into this thing. You see that? Well, it's loose from there to, well, I can't get it to move right now because it's catching the kerfing, but it's, it's loose way up here. So a big part of this is already loose. It's usually easier to take it apart where it's already loose, but typically you don't take the top off of an instrument. You typically take the back off. I'm anything but typical. I think I'm probably gonna take the top off. Now the problem with taking the top off is that most people would take the whole fretboard off. Well, all that does is create scars and messes all the way down here. I'm just going to pull this fret, saw through here. When you do that, the only thing you've done is extend the, cur the uh, saw cut that's in there anyway for the fret. You're just extending it about a 32nd of an inch or less than a 16th of an inch. That's all you're doing. Then you don't have to take the fretboard off. Then you don't make a mess. And all you got is that little tiny line on both sides. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I know some of you are screaming, you're defacing a Martin guitar. Well, you come here and show me how you do it. I bet you'd do it so much better. <laughs> if that's your comment. My comment is it needs to be fixed. It's in really bad shape. There's cracks everywhere in this top. It will be easier to work on the top if the top is loose also versus taking the back off and still having the top attached. I'm taking the top off. Just that simple. If you don't like it, what did they used to say on the playground? If you don't like it, you can lump it. Okay, so just do that. The first thing you gotta do is pull this fret. If you're just careful and go across there really slow, since I'm only pulling one fret, I'm just pulling it right out. And it came out pretty clean. Could have wet that down ahead of time, but I didn't feel like I'd have any trouble, and I didn't. Then you just take the razor saw. Keep in mind, this has an 8 thousandths inch kerf. That's the thickness of two human hairs, that's pretty darn thin. So you won't hardly see the line anyway. Saw down through here. Probably not quite all the way through. I'm through on this side, but I don't think I'm through on the far side. Now, there's two options. You can take this piece off, and I might do that eventually, but right now I'm going to see if I can take the whole top off without taking this off. Then that way I don't have the scarring around here either. You know, we'll see what happens. There, another thing that I've been kicking around is whether I want to take this bridge off now or later. The bridge has got some loose parts to it as well. It's not crazy loose, but you can see that goes under there pretty good. For my money, it's got to come off. I'm used to taking them off while they're still attached, and that kind of gives everything a firm grip, so I think I will just go ahead and try to take this bridge off now. I think it'll be easier on me to do it that way rather than try to take it off while the top is loose. So before I get too far along, that's what I'm going to do. Well, this is heating up. I'll tell you a little bit about this 
device. There's plans to build this on my website, rosastringworks.com. It's actually plans to build the side bender, but the side bender and this are built identically ex with just a couple of exceptions. One of them, of course, would be the block you insert the heater and thermostat into, thermocoupler. So this is a little square block designed to remove fretboards and bridges. The other one, of course, is put into that uh, cylindrical block for bending sides. That's just the main difference between these two things. Additional difference is this one has the covered uh, wires uh, with this flexible uh, conduit. So that keeps the wire from breaking off. These wires are fairly uh, brittle right at the base of the uh, heater itself. So this flexible conduit makes the wire last longer. So on this one, you need that. On the side bender, since you're not really moving it around, you don't really need the flexible conduit heater. That's the only difference between this outfit and the side bender. If you see the plans for the side bender on my website, and you want to build one, it, you, could, you can modify it then to build this as well. There you go. It's up to 290 something degrees, that's Fahrenheit, on a trip headed toward 420 degrees. This little stand here was provided to me. It's a 3D printed neck support there, uh, provided by one of my wonderful viewers. It just so happens it fits uh, perfectly right here on this handle to keep the handle in the air. I put foam on the handle so if it falls down, you know, it won't hurt anything. Works out pretty well. We also have a heating oven uh, for heating up uh, tools like this, but it works just about as well to just heat it on here because these thin blades will heat up incredibly fast. One additional thing that I do whenever I'm uh, going to remove things is I like to have this uh, knife blade. Ooh, that's so hot I can't sand it. <laughs> it's, it's already that hot. I'm seriously telling you that gets hot really fast. But I like to uh, sand off the blade each time. It makes the blade much slicker. It goes in much easier. It gets rid of the old glue and stuff that's on there. And like I said, it's so hot I can't sand it at the moment. Should have thought of that before I heated it up. Trust me, that's really hot. <laughs> that's why you don't really need the oven. You just lay it on there for a couple of seconds and it gets crazy hot. But you can see there the gunk that's going away by sanding that off. Makes it slide in the, the slot so much easier. Plus you also want to keep this knife edge really clean and sharp. All right, well we're up to temperature, so I'm gonna heat the blade back up a little bit. Again, it only takes a couple seconds to get the blade up to temperature. It just melts the glue as it goes in. The hardest part is to not mess up your finish behind here, so it's nice if you have a blade that's fairly flexible that you can kinda keep in the air above your finish here. You can also tape off your finish. It's not a bad idea to tape it off. I don't always do that because believe it or not, even the thickness of the tape sometimes makes it a little bit harder to take the bridge off just because you're, you're adding another 10 thousandths of an inch thickness here that you have to go you know, down below to get there. In other words, this is holding your knife blade up 10 thousandths of an inch. Now you gotta get in under that. So the tape is good and bad. It's not a bad idea to tape it off if you can tape it off because, you know, it saves some blemishes and things. Well, it, it's going in pretty easy because it's pretty hot. So I got the blade real hot and I can just kind of wipe off a lot of that glue, that sticky stuff, that way. Pretty sure this bridge was either replaced or off and on once before. I'm hoping that after we do it this time, it won't ever have to be done again. One of the biggest problems with taking a bridge off is the knife will have a tendency to bury into the top. So you try it really hard to keep the knife flat with the top 
and not let it dig in, but it's very difficult to do, to be perfectly honest. It's not coming loose on this front edge. I hate to go back into it because that's where you can make a lot of scarring. It came off actually really pretty clean. You can see a little bit of residue there, but that's pretty m minor. So anyway, that's off. That kind of is a big relief for me because those can go good or they can go not so good. And this one went pretty well. Okay, using the very same heater off camera, I'm going to heat the knife up. I'm going to start working around my way around here. You know, based on what I'm seeing so far, I'm expecting this to go fairly easy. But then again, what you expect and what happens is usually two different things. Often I score around these with a knife, but this one here seems to be scoring very well on its own. And sometimes scoring it with the knife can actually create more problems than just going with it if it's breaking on its own natural self. And it seems to be working really well. And as you can see, I'm making pretty fast time because we started way back here and we're already there. You're always going to have scarring when you do this kind of thing. There is no easy way to do it. It's a destructive process, and if you don't think it is, then you are just sadly mistaken. I think the old hide glue had already given up the ghost. That's why the top was coming loose. I'm assuming it's old, the old hide glue. I don't really know. And some of you may say, well, that's the reason you use hide glue is it comes apart real easy. And I say that's the reason you don't use it because it comes apart too easy. It already was coming apart on its own. Just about any glue is heat sensitive. Tight bond being very heat sensitive. You can remove tight bond very easily. So when I replace this, I'll replace it with tight bond. And it won't come loose on its own, but if you need to take it loose, you can. The heat on this blade is, is good and bad, and that means that it's good for helping you remove the glue and the top and all that, separate it. But it's bad if you touch someplace you don't want to touch, because it will melt it and create a blemish. So you do have to be pretty precise when you put this in the slot and get it right where you want it. So far so good. I think we're making real good progress here. These probably have the braces set into the sides which is good and bad. Those braces may still be stuck to the kerf in places. be careful here because I did crack the binding right here. It'll go back together and you'll never even see it, but that's just assuming we don't make more damage. I'm going to move around, start around the other way now, see if I can get this back block loose. It might come loose easy, it might not. Do need a lot of heat on this too. Especially when you get to where the blocks are. The tail block and the neck block if you don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm already seeing some little cracks in the finish here. And that really does depend a lot on the kind of finish too. And how old the finish is. But this one is going to give me every fit it can, I can tell. Well, that was not good and uh, totally unexpected. I was going in here and all of a sudden the knife just shot up and it came out 
through the top and I'm not going to try to hide it and lie to you. That's what happened. Right now I think we can fix that without hardly any notice but it's just really disheartening when that kind of stuff happens. Alright so to be clear what happened was the grain apparently was favorable all along this side but when I got to the center line here the grain apparently is going up like this and the knife followed the grain right up and, and came out the top right here. You know because I was able to get in there behind it and come back around this way it didn't seem to create any major problems so I'll be able to glue that back and fix the finish here and I seriously doubt you'll even be able to tell it ever happened. It's just unfortunate. So I have to be much more careful poking in from this side on the rest of this because it doesn't like to go that way. One of the key things to doing this type of work is when things don't go right, and you'd be surprised how often they don't go right, it's knowing what to do to avoid making the problem bigger. Just like when this came through here, going behind it and coming back pulling the grain the other way because that's the way the grain wanted to be pulled, no problem. It just came right off no problem. Didn't create any additional issues. Had I kept working at it from this side, it would have been a big ugly mess. We seem to be doing okay now going this way, though it's not as easy as it was on the other side, that's for sure. There we got a nice easy spot for a change, that's good. I'll take all the easy spots I can get. And I'm pretty sure that the braces are not completely loose in certain places. There we go. Now we're finding a nice easy going spot here. So I'm happy with that. Now we'll see if we can get the rest of it off. Well, I have to be honest, it cracked the binding there again. Just when it starts to get easy, then it has to throw you a curve. This one is the binding and the top are about the same thickness. That's why I don't have to take the binding off first. And not having to take the binding off first is creating a lot less of a cosmetic issue on the top. Had I had to take the binding off first, I probably wouldn't have taken the top off. With any luck, we'll be get through the neck block here now. If we can have any luck on the neck block, then this should come apart. But I have a feeling the neck block's gonna present a problem. I'll set this on here to see if we can heat up the neck block some. This might soften the glue and help me. Since the fingerboard's still on there, I can go straight through down to it. We'll give it a few minutes and I'll show you what that looks like here once this gets heated up. I've been heating this for quite a while. It's not really seeming to do much good. It's not helping a whole lot. I don't think it's hurting anything so I'm going to keep heating it for a little bit. I'm heating up the knife super hot. Just about as hot as it can be. I'm trying to force it through there because there's, there's no delicate way to do it. It's going. I'm going to quickly turn this around and try to force it in from the other side this time. A little bit of a binding problem right there. That's a little harder to get from that side, so the binding is getting a little distorted. I hate that, but like I said, this is a destructive process. It's not easily done, and you kind of have to do what you have to do to make it happen. I'm going to heat it up with that blade inside there. That might even transfer this heat better. I can't really get to it from inside here because there's a brace in the way before you get to the block. doesn't fall in line to work well that way. It's not easy. I'm going to try the bigger blade and see if we can get the bigger blade to go in there the rest of the way. 
Well, we're pretty darn close to having it off, but it hasn't given up the ghost yet. And like I said, I think the braces are still stuck in places too, but the top itself is loose. Well, I think I'm gonna have to try to go in from the other side, even though that could create a problem here with this piece of binding. I'm gonna see if I can pull this piece of binding out. Can't really get it to come out. It's gonna to have to work around it. I'm gonna leave that knife in there. Try to come in from the other side with this big blade and maybe the two of them together will force it off. It's so close, but yet it's so far. having the same problem that I had back here. I'm having the same problem on this side up here. The grain is going the wrong way to force this in there. It wants to slide up instead of staying level on the block. On this side, it stays on the block. It always goes to the softest wood, you know. That's just the way it works. And the top is by far the softest piece of wood. So from this side, it forces in pretty good. It just I need a longer blade. I know I've got one here somewhere, but I don't think it's strong enough to force it through there. Dr. Kelly sent us this uh, long blade, and it's a good blade for something like this. The problem with it is it's really super flexible, and because of that, it will bend if you exert much pressure on it. I'm not even sure I can get it in the easy parts here without it bending, let alone up into the hard part, but I'm gonna try. At least it'll reach all the way through. It's in there, but it's not doing much. So let me heat it up some more. It's really the only place it's being held at this point, I think. It's right there. I think there's one little brace right here that's still on the kerf a little bit. See if I can get that loose. Yeah, and there's one brace that's still pretty stuck in the kerf. Wish that wasn't the case because it would come off here much easier. I got it loose. I probably broke the kerf a little bit, but that's not a big deal. We can fix kerfing easy. I kind of expected the neck block to be the problem area, of course, and it is. But I think we'll get it here if we just keep working at it. Well, something happened there that did not go well. That cracked the side here a little bit. The edge on that, it's kind of bent, and it caught and it cracked it. More to fix, unfortunately. I hate that so bad, but I don't know what else to do. Can't quit now, because we're right here at the end. Thought that big knife would be helpful, but I didn't expect it to grab that side like that. I don't know why it did that. Well, this is not going well now. It was really nice with the exception of that problem and that problem until that. That's not good. I don't even know why that happened. We were already past that part. This one was one that kind of got botched, I have to admit. We'll be able to fix it all back, but it just did not go even sort of half as well as I expected. I don't know why it won't come loose. It really should be loose. It just isn't cooperating at all. This one is one of those days where you just don't enjoy what you're doing. It should have just been so much easier. I don't know why 
it had to just spoil everything. I really don't know what on this caught. The only thing I can see is the wrinkled edge. Somehow, when I was wiggling, it caught on the kerf on that and just pushed that out. It shouldn't have done what it did, but it did it. I'd say it was this wrinkled edge somehow caught the kerf. When I was wiggling like this, it just pried the side out and popped the side. What a shame. It really shouldn't have done that. It just shouldn't have, but it did. And this should come off of here, but it, it won't. So I'm frustrated. This is not fun. trying to poke this long skinny blade into places where I haven't been able to get the other blades but honestly I don't know why it's not coming off it just should come off it's still got something there holding it it's so close yet so far from coming. I don't know what it could be held on. It's only doing it because it can. There's no good reason for this at all. And of course a lot of folks are going to say I should have took this off and maybe I should have but on the other hand it should have made it a lot easier to do this with it on there. It keeps it stiffer the powers that be decided that this wasn't going to be an easy one. Really don't know what's holding it. I'm just about tempted to just go ahead and force it because at this point there's not much that could be holding it. I have never ever had one do what this is doing. Yeah, I don't know. It was one of those deals where it just didn't want to come. In hindsight, had I taken this off, that probably would have made it a little easier in this case. On the other hand, it shouldn't have had to been done. This is really a crazy looking thing. I don't know why it looks like it does. This block looks like it was carved down real low here. There's nothing, there's no block missing. It's crazy. Anyway, it's off of there. Yes, there was damage done. Yes, I can fix it. Yes, it definitely needed to come off. See all the glue on this thing and this mess? This is just a disaster. So as big a disaster as I created, maybe it couldn't be avoided with all the disaster that's there. Do you understand the point of taking it apart now? It was really, really, really bad and just botched from days gone by. People have just botched the heck out of this thing. And somebody's put this brace in here that doesn't even belong there. It's just botched. There's, this brace was put in, this brace was put in, these toothpicks were glued in, all this extra glue poured everywhere. It just needed to come apart. As bad as we had to tear it up getting it apart, we can fix every bit of it, I think, and it's going to look wonderful when we're done. I make no apologies for the way it happened. It just happened uh, the way it happened. As horrible as it, I may be making it sound, it's just very frustrating when you're doing these things and you don't expect things to happen that do. Like this especially. I do not know why that happened. But I will fix this and like I said you will barely be able to even tell it ever happened if you can tell it at all. Sure, certainly better than all the crud that's happened to this thing in the past. It'll be good when we're done. Okay, to start my journey back from destruction here, from total destruction, I found this little piece that broke off the block here, so that's why that looked the way it did. And I'm going to glue that back. I've got the Tight Bond 3, and the reason I'm using Tight Bond 3 is this is the kind of thing you don't ever want to come loose again. So, the Tight Bond 3 would be good for that. 
I'm going to do a lot of splinter fixing like this right now, so I'm not going to show all of that. I'll show you anything that I think you'll find interesting. For the most part, we're just going to try to patch up some of the worst damage of taking it up the top off. This destruction that I caused, I'm going to try to fix up first. Then once I get that fixed, then we'll turn the camera back on real good and show you all of the crud that we're going to fix here on this guitar because there's a lot of it and it's going to take some fixing, trust me. It's way worse than I even thought it was. I just want to point out something I think is funny and sad and just my typical normal kind of luck. We're poking through here with all that force. You can see it came out really clean. I, you know, it, it really did come apart cleanly. Mostly that's the failure of the hide glue. That's the reason it came apart that clean because it was already coming apart. But here, you know, at the blocks, it never does come apart easy. And so I'm forcing the knife through. Can you see any damage here at all? At all, look, look real close. Do you see anything? There's nothing there. You can't see it even here in the studio with my naked eye this close. I don't see a problem on this side. Yet the knife went all the way through that and came out right here. And you could actually see the knife blade come out right here. I saw the blade come through. Yet when you turn it over, there's nothing there. That just shows you my typical kind of luck. It's just unbelievable. If you don't see these things, you couldn't possibly believe them. There's no damage whatsoever there. You don't see any line, you don't see any mark, yet the knife blade came all the way through the top here. Yeah, you just explain that one to me. I would love to hear your explanation. I just don't get it. I don't see how that happens, but it happens. So now I've got to get glue under it here somewhere, wherever the damage is. I'm going to just mound the glue up, basically. Paint it back under there. Yeah, even in the studio here, Caleb looked at it close. He could not see a mark anywhere either. So it's just crazy how that stuff happens. I expected it to be just a disastrous thing on the inside there since it knife came all the way through the top, but yet you can't even see it. Just amazing how that stuff happens like that. You can see I got glue under there really well because it squeezes out. Enough talking about it, just got to fix it. I think I'm just going to use this rubber clamp to clamp it. My idea to fix this even more is I imagine this is a nitrocellulose lacquer finish. I'm pretty sure it is. My idea to fix it better is to try to melt the lacquer back and then recoat it, sand it, and polish it. I don't think you're going to be able to tell it much when I'm done, but you never know. These things have a way of doing their own thing just to make it hard on you. I've already glued up the crack on the side that I caused. Uh, it's looking pretty good. I've got one more crack up here that you know I caused taking the top off. So we'll get to that later. I'm just going to let this set and do its thing so that that can you know adhere really well. Thought you might find it interesting on this guitar to show how badly the top is messed up. When you look at it this way, see how it's laying completely flat all the way through here. It's, it's absolutely flat. And when you get to the bridge, you know, you can see how after you pass the bridge, it's uh, a half inch off of the top there. That ain't supposed to be like that, I can tell you for sure. I mean, there might be a tiny bit of a raise there, but it should only be maybe a sixteenth of an inch, if that. It, and it really should be almost flat. But this has got a half inch gap in it there. That's a lot. This is really messed up in a big way. It's going to take quite a bit of fun to fix it. How they ever got all that to work like that, I don't know. All those toothpicks in there. I have a feeling they must have uh, turned it up this way, reached back in there with a bottle of glue, poured it in there, and then laid toothpicks all over it. Guess who gets to clean all that mess up? Me! I got problems big time on this top here. Some people may argue and say that there is a little bit of a 
arch to these tops, and that may be true. There may be a slight arch to some of it, but I can tell you the arch that's in this is excessive. It's excessive. This side of the top is way worse than this side. Maybe that can be shown with the straight edge again. Yeah, because it's barely off the pick guard there on this side. But over here, it's off by nearly a quarter inch or so, or maybe even three eighths. Might even be a half. It's off a lot on this side, but on this side, it's almost flat, which is the way it probably should be. It's just not pretty. This thing is going to need some work, and the problem with that is, with all these braces are in there, they've taken that shape, and they probably don't want to go back. All this extra glue poured in here is holding them in place. It's just not pretty. I don't know where to start, really. You might think, oh, it's easy, you do it every time, you, you always pull it out. Well, every one of these is a little different. And this one's pretty ugly. It's ugly in a lot of ways. I've seen worse, don't get me wrong, but this thing's pretty dang ugly. It's not a simple fix, but it's got to be done, so I'll figure something out. My friends, due to many other priorities, it's been several days since I've worked on this 0018 Martin guitar. It just, I don't even know where to start. I think I set it down and put it away purposely because I just don't even know where to start. I mean, it's such a mess. Random pieces of wood that have been glued in are not glued on the ends. They're coming out, so I might as well get started there, I guess. We'll start with this random piece right here. I'm not sure how I want to get it out of there. I'm going to try something kind of crazy. I'm going to tap it and see if it turns loose. Of course not. That would be too easy. I'll try option number two. I don't really like this option that much. It may look like this makes sense, but the problem is you're putting a lot of pressure on this top. Like if, if you stick this under there and you pry down, you're gonna break your top. So you can't really use it to pry. I'm just cutting off the, old, the glue that's sticking out on the edges here, which could be holding something. Maybe if I get rid of that, it'll be a little easier to remove because that stuff's spreading out the uh, load there. All right, I'm gonna try tapping it again. Not likely though, doesn't look like it. All right, well, I'll tell you how I'm gonna get it out of there then. Rather than tr risk breaking all this, I'm just going to chisel it out. The first piece that flew off of there flew all the way over to uh, Caleb's desk, so I'm actually flinging random pieces of wood at Caleb at the moment. Aha! Well, it came off pretty clean. At least I got some of it off pretty clean. And this end is loose, so that was the right approach. The only negative is now I can't fling any more random pieces of wood at Caleb. That's all right, he's getting too good at dodging them anyway. I'm using the end of the chisel to kind of scrape it and get rid of the extra glue. There's glue all over the place here, so I'm not gonna worry about all that right at the moment. Right now, I'm just gonna get the random stuff out of here and then we'll start on the glue next. Why well, wonder why they... What's happened there? Oh, there was a hole drilled all the way through. Isn't that special? There's a uh, dowel pin right here. That's a dowel pin here, all the way through the brace. Now, I just wonder what that was for. I don't think this ever had an adjustable bridge on it, and I doubt it was screwed on from the Martin factory. Got no idea. There's any number of ideas why that's like that. Uh, I know it didn't come that way from the factory with holes drilled through these braces and dowel pins in there. Caleb suggested that maybe somebody 
saw the bridge coming loose and drilled screws up through there or down through there, put bolts in there. And then somebody later, when they replaced the bridge, because they did replace it, maybe they filled uh, the holes in with dowel pins. That's probably as good a guess as any. Uh, yeah, this is just a real wreck. See, that wasn't glued at all. That's the other problem with gluing random pieces of wood up inside your guitar. Most of them aren't glued very well to begin with. If you're not gonna make sure it's all clamped up really good and good glue coverage and etc., what's the point? Don't glue random pieces of wood in your guitar. Now, who would have ever thought you could get the toothpick out in one piece with that much glue around it? There you go. There's your hide glue for you because that's I'm 99% sure that's hide glue. It's uh, brittle, like hide glue, and it just pops loose. That'll give you some idea why I don't like hide glue. Now, that one there held a little bit better. It still came up in a pretty big piece for a toothpick. And that one came all the way out by itself without breaking. So I got two toothpicks out without breaking them at all. Yeah, there's my last argument on hide glue right there. It won't even hold a toothpick. Hmm, I'm not quite sure how to get this glue out of here. I'm gonna try water and see if water will soften this because if it's hide glue, which I believe it is, I believe water will soften it. So I'm gonna try that. Yeah, I'm pretty positive it's hide glue. I can smell it when I put it on here, when I put the water on here, the hot water. So might at least get lucky and be able to wash it off. That might be the one advantage here of the fact that they used hide glue. It's not coming off real quick, but it is coming up. They could have just used a lot less hide in this. In other words, they must have used a buffalo instead of <laughs> instead of a deer hide. <laughs> they used a lot of glue, that's all I can tell you. Oh my gosh. Everything's getting sticky now because of this. It's working, but it's going so slow that I'm not sure I'm doing any good. But I think it's still the way to go because otherwise we're just gonna tear this top all to pieces. My only negative is I'm afraid this will get the top so wet that it might make, the, make it look milky under the finish on this side. Um, so I'm concerned about that. But it is washing it off. It's just taking a very long time because there's so much of it. You can see how sticky it's getting here. It's definitely sticky. You can see the gelatin there, I guess, in the glue. I guess the ironic part about this is that typically the hide glue is, you know, if you believe their hype, they use... Uh, it's used by the finest artisans, you know, the, the classically trained violin makers and guitar builders and luthiers. So you would think if somebody knew enough to use hide glue, they would have probably used it a little bit better and more in proportion to what they were gluing rather than smearing it all over the whole inside of the guitar. So it is kind of ironic. That it, a glue that you would think would be used by somebody that would knowing what they're doing is just everywhere. Yeah, it's it's a sticky mess. I guess I'm not going to film a whole lot more of this because it's just going to take a long time to get it all off. And I'll show you what it looks like if I ever get through this. This is definitely washing the glue off. Uh, I had to go to a bigger pan of water to 
be able to rinse the rag better because the glue gets really sticky. I'm a little concerned by wetting this down so much uh, with the finish on the other side, as I mentioned that it might get cloudy, but I'm also concerned about um, the fact that it may swell up and cause it to, uh, you know, break somewhere or create additional problems because it'll, the wood will swell. This much moisture is not a good thing. I don't like doing this, but I don't really have too many choices. It is washing up pretty well. It is coming off fairly well, considering how coated everything is. Even the braces are coated with this stuff. I just need to, I feel like I need to get it back to a level playing field before I start, you know, building it back. Some of the glue is not hide glue, but it is turning milky white, so it's probably a wood glue. Could even be Elmer's for all I can tell. Elmer's turns white pretty easily. But a wood glue will turn white also if you get it wet enough. But the hide glue itself, it's just dissolving and washing off over time here. It's not a quick job, but it's working. Been working on this quite a bit off camera and I have got most of the big areas of glue washed off. There's still areas left, especially like a long brace, these braces here, I haven't got to that yet, but in these big open areas where they just had glue just running everywhere, most of that is gone. What I don't want is to coat the whole inside of this with this glue. So I'm going back over the area that I have cleaned with a clean towel now to try to get rid of the rest of the glue because I don't really want to put a glue finish on the inside of this guitar. And that's effectively what you're doing because that glue just smears. It doesn't, it doesn't just wipe up like you might think. It thins out and smears all over everything. I can tell when I rinse out my towel, the color of the water is changing slightly, so there's still glue coming up. Well, I'm gonna just keep doing that until I am satisfied, and I've got quite a ways to go yet, I think. Well, I've scraped off some more of the uh, dead animal here. If you don't know what I'm referring to, that's hide glue. That's what it is. They boil the hides down, and the gelatin that comes out of there and dries, becomes a glue and you can reconstitute it by you know heating it or getting it wet and by the fact that I'm getting this really wet and then trying to peel it off of here it's uh, sticking to, to me like crazy. This was all damp over here and I've been peeling it off here trying to thin it down before I try to wash the remainder off because it's so thick that it doesn't wash off very well. Like right here there's beads of it and if I can just get rid of those beads. And so you can see there, there's a lot of glue there. And it's just as sticky as it can be. You can see how it sticks your fingers together. I really want to get it all clean before I even think about starting the fix. Because it's just a mess. I'm going to try the heat gun on this to try to dry it up a little bit because I've got it pretty wet. It's got a ways to go yet, but that was a huge improvement, as you can see, I think. The staining is still there, but I don't think there's any glue there, at least in most of those places. There's probably some a little bit, like here's some glue here. That's where it was really thick. There was probably a sixteenth of an inch thick through there, or thicker. 
Here's some other white glue that's in here that needs to come out. I'm gonna do some studying on this to see how these were made and to see if there was any type of arch in them. I'm not really 100% sure. I don't think there was much arch in a, a 0018. I believe they were pretty flat. These braces are all very curved and they're not symmetrically curved. In other words, they're more curved on one side than they are on the other. This side here's fairly flat. This side here's fairly curved. My point is, I may have to replace all these braces to get this to go flat because they've decided they're in this shape and they don't want to go flat again. But I'll do some more research before I make that decision. My friends, it's the next day in the saga of this 0018. And you can see it looks a whole lot better after that hot water bath I gave it yesterday. You know, it's amazing what a little soap and water will do. It could still use it in a place or two, but it's not too bad now. For instance, there's still quite a bit of glue in, right along some of the corners of the braces and things. What I'm trying to decide is how far to take this. That's always the answer or the question on any kind of restore like this. It's how far should I go? How far does it need to go? Unfortunately, I kind of think this one needs to go pretty far. You know, wood has a memory, and once it gets that memory, which, and if you don't know what I mean by that, it's once it takes a shape. You know, it doesn't matter what that shape is, but once it takes that shape, it don't like to give it up. Like, for instance, if you just think about it like this, it took 60 years for the strings to pull that wood into a bowed up shape on this top. It caused cracks in the top, it caused all kinds of problems, but it bowed everything, including the braces. To naively think you're just going to, like, say, humidify it or do something crazy like that and get this come back into shape, you're dreaming. You're dreaming all day long. And even if you could, like, you know, humidify it and press it back into shape and then let it set that way, how long do you think it would take before the strings pull it back into that quote-unquote memory that it has? Because it's already found that shape and it likes that shape. In my opinion, and, and in all of the years I've been doing this, the only way I've been able to guarantee it'll take a new shape is to fix it mechanically. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's almost this whole everything back here. It's pretty much all the braces, it's the, the pad, everything. Because everything is pulled up. To my eye, my eye's pretty sensitive when it comes to looking at this stuff. You know, I've been doing it a long time. This side here is far worse. The, the base side is far worse than the treble side. From that standpoint, I could work on the base side of this and straighten that out. I probably could get away with that, but I don't know if I wanna just do it halfway like that or just do the whole thing since I'm doing it anyway. So those are the thoughts that are going through my head and I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm sure many of you are screaming at the uh, screen on what you would do, but it's just not a simple decision. Partly because of cost, partly because of the vintage nature of the instrument. All those things have to be considered. Here's always my bottom line. I don't care if it's a vintage instrument or the most valuable instrument in the world. If it don't work and it don't play and you can't use it, what good is it? I mean, you can set it on a shelf and look at it. What's that do for you? We're not talking about a museum piece here so we don't need to set it on a shelf and look at it we need to get this thing playable so with that in mind I guess I'm gonna tear into it and I guess like you know my theory is always do the easy thing first so because of that and because this side is far worse than this side this side here is almost fine draw a line across here this section is fine this section is not so I guess I'm just going to work on this section and let's see where that takes us.